Welcome to Financial Focus, brought to you by Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO, John Kirkendall. John and his team of financial, legal, and tax professionals have provided North Florida savers and investors sound, comprehensive financial guidance for over 25 years, helping you to achieve important life and planning goals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more Financial Focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. And welcome into the program. This is Financial Focus brought to you by the team at Gulf Coast Financial Services, named best of the best in financial services, six years and running by the Lake City Reporter, serving North Central Florida savers and investors. Founder CEO John Kirkendall here with us, as always, providing the guidance, the insight and perspective back from a, a extended trip. And uh, John, <laughs> welcome back. We we always enjoy having you on the program. Thank you, Peter. Had a little vacation and really enjoyed it. Uh, went to the Harley Davidson Museum in uh, Milwaukee and got to see all of the history of Harley Davidson under one roof. And I tell you what, it was really spectacular. Great museum if anybody wants to go somewhere uh, and just spend a day. And, and an antique truck show as well, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, I got into antique trucks uh, about a year ago. And so we went to uh, Pigeon Forge. They had the F1 grand convention each year they do that uh, and so we went up there saw some great 48 to uh, 56 trucks up there it was a fantastic time got to uh, see meet some people and uh, see some really splendid replicas or trucks that had been rebuilt uh, and they were just beautiful it's amazing uh, what we can do with those old things you find some things when, to spend when, some money on <laughs> well, money's no object. That's one thing I found up there in, in a lot of cases. But yeah, we uh, we picked up some parts manuals and uh, some other things to bring back. So I was really excited about that. So nice. had a really great time. It was good to get away. Uh, and at the same time, you know, be able to reflect on this year and where we're going for the rest of the year and what, what Gulf Coast is doing. Yeah, well, with, with things beginning to loosen up or have some semblance of return to normalcy more across the country, we've got some freedom. I think this summer we'll have some more travel, at least more than we did last summer. But reflecting on that, John, I mean, we're more than halfway through the year here now. What what have you seen are sort of the leading financial or economic stories, or what are you paying attention to as you're helping people plan and prepare with their money that, that you really are kind of trying to address or help them to get a better grasp on? Well, I think, Peter, that the big story this year, of course, is, has been the extra stimulus, uh, several stimulus and packages, uh, and also what the government's doing in regulation as far as freeing up money for infrastructure and such, which leads me to the conclusion that taxes have to go up. We're already seeing the proposal that we will have higher taxes. Uh, in some cases, the uh, state uh, tax is being reduced in half, which won't affect the majority of my clients. But uh, the capital gains tax and other things will. And so we're addressing taxes and trying to be proactive in that area, doing Roth conversions and also looking at alternative ways to invest money so that we don't have to uh, pay taxes on it uh, when, we, when we take it out. Taxes are going to be a big thing. Inflation, I think, in a couple of years is going to really hit us. Uh, I'm seeing it now. You know, this stimulus package, which created the extra $300 uh, for the, uh, for the uh, unemployment, that has created a total deboggle with, uh, with, with people wanting to work. So I'm hearing more and more. Uh, in fact, I just got notified today that uh, we're replacing the roof on our building. Now, you wouldn't think that that would be a problem, but I was just notified that the manufacturer can't produce the material because all their workers have gone out on unemployment mm. and so they're not going to be able to provide us with the material uh, in a timely fashion and it's going to be three or four months uh, before we can get our roof fixed yeah uh, uh, help wanted signs up everywhere and, everywhere. Yet, and yet the unemployment numbers remain so high <laughs> so something yeah, something's every, amiss there everywhere on our trip everywhere every exit that we got off on the interstates were all help wanted signs everywhere. People were talking about how they needed help. But yeah, we've got, you know, the unemployment numbers don't justify that. People are just not wanting to work right now. And so I noticed that, you know, Florida 
is uh, come out and said that they are going to eliminate the extra uh, pay uh, in June for unemployment and go back to the fact that you have to try to you have to prove to them you're trying to find a job in order to get unemployment. So I think that's going to force some people to go back to work. Hopefully we can get this thing eliminated pretty quickly here. Now, when you mentioned taxes being a big story, this is something that you've been talking about, at least here on Financial Focus for many years. So that's no surprise. The other side of that, the inflation that you spoke about is also something you've been talking about on on the program, um, but maybe the amount of inflation that we're already seeing a little bit of a surprise or or at least something that we do need to address more carefully? Well, I, I think you're right, Peter. We're looking at, you know, lumber is already up 50% from last year, and it was up 194% for the year before. So, I mean, that's when we look at that, that's inflation. People are seeing that when they're trying to build homes. So inflation is something that's going to hit us pretty hard pretty soon because mainly, you know, we haven't been able to get the goods to, to market. We haven't been able to uh, have enough trucks, you know, just this gas situation and some other things that we've had in the past. I, I think that uh, um, infl- inflation is going to be something we're going to have to look for. And we may not have figured enough inflation. We figure 3% in our plans. So, you know, with a 3% inflation, uh, rates are changing every 24 years. You're doubling the amount of goods you're costing. So we tried to project that. Hopefully that is enough. It may not be. That and the fact that I'm still concerned about Social Security and, and us hitting that uh, I, where I'm going to get some of my check, but I may not get all of my check. Uh, there are a lot of people that that rely on Social Security. Yeah, absolutely. A cornerstone of, of retirement planning, obviously, with Social mm-hmm. Security. And we want that to be a dependable piece of the foundation. Unfortunately, they've been telling us that it may not be as solid as we would hope and that there could be a reduction in benefits. How exactly that looks, I think, is still very much up in the air. Yeah. Uh, John, I, I just, I don't expect somebody who is already receiving social security to have a large cut in it. What I would <laughs> expect as a younger person is for them to tell me, Hey, you're not getting as much. And that's where they maybe make up the difference, but who knows? Cause wild ideas, um, don't seem to have a whole lot of sense sometimes out of, out of, Washington. So that that aside, a <laughs> um, little personal commentary, we could probably make uh, several programs on just that alone. But you've got a list here. And I, I like these reports and these lists that uh, you have been providing here on the program. I think they're good food for thought and information for planners to to consider carefully. The one today points out some fundamental, maybe flaws, if we count and rely on these, but seven financial myths, common planning mistakes or misconceptions that many plans are based on. And the number one on this list is something that we've sort of always been told, but the language on how we've been told it is very important. Number one, the market always goes up. That is something we hear commonly, John, but it's not something that in reality we can count on. Well, no, Peter. And and what happens is, is unfortunately, over time, the market does go up. So if we look back from, uh, you know, when we started tracking the stock market, the market has gone up an average of, I think it's a little over 9%. The problem is, is it doesn't go up consistently up. It goes up and down. And so if you take a short approach to that market, you're going to see a lot of dips, and a lot of valleys in there. And it depends on how we're taking our money out as we've talked on the show before with this sequence of return as we call it. Because if I'm taking money out in a down market, my money's not gonna last me as long as if I take it out over a, a rising market. And so what we have to do is we have to try to put other sources of predictable, sustainable income into the plan so that we don't totally rely on the market. And if you're relying on asset allocation uh, to have your plan, then you're subject to ups and downs. Uh, and you're going to have to do something to, uh, to do that. You can't predict what the market's going to do. And, you know, we've had periods of time where there have been 10 or 15 years where the market overall started at one point and ended up at the same point. It just went up and down in those in those years. So uh, we can't predict. We can't we can't rely on asset allocation totally for retirement. 
Well, you've shared a chart with me before where it showed kind of the last hundred years of market performance and the fact that there were 14 different periods where the market had significant declines. Um, you know, the last decade has been fantastic, but not every decade is like the last decade because the one directly before that had two different 50% drops. And on average, uh, there have been 14 of these major downturns over the last hundred years. So they happen about every seven years. And the average downturn during those times was a loss of about 40%, 39%. So as close to 40% as you can get. If we are retired and that's happening with that average in mind, we probably stand the chance of seeing a 40% decline three, four, five times over the course of our retirement, John. And so relying on a plan where it predicts the market always goes up in that linear fashion can, yeah. can be pretty dangerous. Oh, yeah, Peter. It's something we can't rely on. I mean, the market's a great place. It's great for our growth bucket. It's great for us to have because we need to get the returns uh, that the market's going to give us. But we can't base our whole plan, all of our income off of the, uh, the market. It's just not going to be reliable. Well, the number two is that average market rate of return being 10%. And, and people hear that. Um, I'm 41, but distantly sometime in my future, or I mean, in my past, in my distant past, I do remember being mm -hmm. in school. And I was, I was a pretty decent student. Uh, however, I, I remember a couple assignments where I got a zero or I got a pretty low score of 50 and how bad that affected my grade, how how low that brought my average, even if every other project was a good grade, that would significantly reduce my overall average. And so when we rely on this 10% theoretical rate of return, John, and it does not happen um, linearly, predictably every year, that, that really can have deep impacts on the overall sustainability of that plan. Oh yeah, Peter, we've proven that over and over again. That you know, uh, you know, you, you're you, these forty percent drops or whatever. We, people have short memories, and so right, you know, right now the market's hot. People are thinking the market's going to go up. We're a little bit concerned because it's like more volatile, but it's still going up and has been a good source. But we can't rely on that. You know, back in 2020 in February, when we had that huge drop in February because of COVID, it was really a V. We came right back out of it. And so we made up those losses very quickly. Yeah. Uh, something that you can't rely on because normally we don't have a V. We have more of a downturn and it's usually a W. Uh, and so it goes up and down. I, you got to have other sources of income, predictable, sustainable income, as we've said. You've got to be able to do that in order to have a sustainable plan. You can't rely on that myth that the stock market returns 10%. It doesn't return 10% every year, every month, every day. It just doesn't do it. It's not, a, it's not average not to return. Well, number three on the list is about that cash flow and the income we can withdraw. And Many plans, John, are based on this 4% rule. And for those just listening, air quotes there for the rule part of that, um, because we've been told that the average rate of return is that high number. Maybe it's 9 or 10%. People believe that they should be able to take out even a lower amount of cash flow. If, if the market's averaging and my rate of return is 10%, I should be able to take out 4 But that 4% rule, and more correctly, theory, has actually been proven to fail during periods of volatility and and with the generation that retired in the late 90s early 2000s they really suffered some some ill-fated consequences from following this model yeah well that was you know i think it was started in what 1976 is when we came up with that four percent rule things were a lot different then and as you know even in the last 10 years things are a lot different i mean we've our technology is progressing at unbelievable rates. We're talking about who would have ever thought we'd have these Zoom meetings and be able to see each other. It was Dick Tracy kind of stuff, you know, your, your watch and where you could see yourself on your watch or talk on it. Those are Dick Tracy things. We'll never get those we used to say. And so, uh, you know, now we're doing all this stuff and technology is so much quicker that uh, you can't rely on that market that we had back then when we came up with that 4% rule to be the rule we need now. We're, it's been proven by Wall Street and several others that 1.78 or 2% is a much better rate of return on average to take out. 
uh, than it is for the 4%. You know, Brent and I were just talking this morning. We were going over a seminar that we used to do in uh, the early 2000s, and we were teaching people how to read a stock page in a newspaper. How many stock pages are there today that people actually look at? Yeah. I, not many. <laughs> no. no. You go, you go yeah. to your ticker on your CNBC or your Yahoo or wherever you, and you look yeah. at your chart is right there with your stocks. Right. And you're looking at today's to now, mid, the minute. Right. Whereas moment before, by moment. Yeah. We were looking at yesterday's. And so there was some stability uh, to the whole thing because we weren't that close to everything. Now everything is instant. It's con now. What am I doing now? And so, you know, it's just a lot different. And maybe leading to some an emotional knee-jerk reactions because it's so up-to-date, people paying much closer attention to the minute-by-minute -minute movement and reacting to it. Unfortunately, possibly overcorrecting. And I learned in driver's ed, that was one of the worst things that you can do uh, when, when driving a car. Also with your financial vehicles, one of the worst <laughs> things you can do, overcorrect. Well, how many times have you looked at the stock and the stock was down eight bucks and you sold it? And then before the end of the day, it was up five. I mean, you, you can't just look at what do it's doing. You got to have a plan. There was a reason you bought it. You got to figure out what that is and you got to stick with the plan. Just like the income plan, you got to stick with the income plan. Number four on this, this list of seven common financial myths. We touched on it a little bit, but taxes will be lower in retirement, John. That's, that's the premise that most of us have saved based well, off of. Well, you know, that was the thing we used to teach because we figured that if you were making working and making, say, $80,000, you were in a 20% tax bracket. But when you retired, you were going to need less money, right? And so, therefore, you would be in a lower tax bracket. And we taught, you know, don't, don't save, defer now, because when you pull it out later, you'd be in a lower bracket. That doesn't work. And we've proven that. I mean, it, that was just something that was a myth. That was a myth. I mean, I, I, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Well, I know that taxes have come down since the early 80s when the majority of people started saving in their 401ks, but the cost of living has gone up substantially. And even though tax brackets may include higher levels of income, most people are paying about the same in taxes. So... I think Uncle Sam understood that if they allow us to grow that money and defer and delay paying the tax bill, that they get to tax more money in the end. And and you and I and, and the average uh, 401k participant, John, sort of just now realizing that. Well, that's true, Peter. It's in the last couple of years that we've really decided with the technology and the computers and the software we have, we, we did it wrong. Now, we were teaching wrong. We told you wrong. Um, that's not the situation. We don't need to, we need to defer in order to get the match. But after that, we need to put things in vehicles that are going to be tax free, like Ross, life insurance and other things, because it's, it, we are going to be paying more. And not only that, but when you hit that required minimum distribution, you may be forced to take out money that you really don't want and don't need, but you got to pay the taxes on. Well, if you'd like the full list of these seven financial myths, be sure to uh, get in touch with the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services. Yes. You can go online, gulfcoastfinancial.net, or you can give a call, 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. But the last one we'll, we'll touch on, John, another one of the big stories for this year that you, you mentioned at the beginning. A lot of financial plans assume that we just need a flat level income throughout retirement. We've got to include this inflationary asset. And, and you at Gulf Coast yeah. Financial Services, you, you guys have been doing that for quite some time. Oh, yeah. We've always included that, Peter. I mean, I, the, the money we need today is not going to be the money I'm going to need tomorrow. I'm going to need a lot more money. And when we show people that, hey, we may start out with 50000 now, but before we get through, it's looking like 100 or 120 or 30. They're a little surprised. But if you look at inflation, they're going to need that in order to keep up the current lifestyle. And, you know, the, the other things that we talk about in retirement, you know, taxes, Medicare, the cost of health care, it isn't going down. Just because you're a senior and you're retired, you're still going to be paying health care. I mean, Medicare is a wonderful situation. I mean, I love it. It's great. But it isn't free. No. And uh, I've seen studies and statistics uh, from Department of Health and Human Services mm -hmm. and things like that that say the average couple's 
health care bill in retirement is in excess of 250000 or it's a big number that a lot of it yeah. does come from the Social Security income on one hand, but then if you're planning on spending that income, uh, it's, it's, it's already been spent on the Medicare premiums. So, Well, that's right. And that number you quoted was just the Medicare premiums and the Part B D for the uh, for the prescriptions, right? That didn't include any copays or anything, right? Yeah, med, uh, vision, dental, yeah, long term care. If we are are, are uh, experiencing that, all those are in addition to that numbers, right? No, and dental. Yep. That you know they don't care if your teeth fall out; they'll still you know you can you can get <laughs> get treated for certain things, but you can't get dental. Yeah. Well, John, uh, this this list seven financial myths. I think it's well worth every saver and investor to check these out and then ask themselves, reflect on their current plan. Am I reliant on any of these to hold true for my financial security throughout retirement? And, and if you find you are probably reason to reassess and address that in your planning. And, and John, that's one of the real values of being tuned into this program is that you offer the ability to go through a planning strategy session and get a financially focused retirement plan. Yeah, Peter, our financial focus plan will cover all that, cover the cost of insurance. We'll look at, we'll try to maximize Social Security, tell you where you are on that. Look at taxes. We do tax planning. So all of that's covered within that plan that we put together. Uh, and it'll be a comprehensive plan, but it won't be, you know, 500 pages in a notebook. It'll actually be a PowerPoint that we can show you and then give to you later. Yeah, something you can understand, you can, you can, you can absorb, and then you can with that information, act on those items that need to be addressed. That's the financial focused retirement plan. If you'd like to get that, pick up the phone, give a call, get that process started, 386-755-9018, or go online, golfcoastfinancial.net. And with either of those, you can also request this list of the seven common financial myths and planning mistakes and misconceptions. So if you'd like to get that list, I encourage you to do so, or get your financially focused plan. Again, give a call, 386-755-9018. John, we always appreciate your time here on the program. Thank you, Peter. It's great being here. Great being back. Thanks. Always a pleasure. And I know the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services, Gulf Coast Tax Advantage, looking to help you create a, a more efficient, optimized plan. Give them a call, 386-755-9018. We'll talk to you next time on Financial Focus. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more Financial Focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only, without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature and not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or competent advisor. Investment in securities or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based only on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs. Early withdrawals may subject the owner to penalties, fees, or taxes. John Kirkendall is registered with and securities are offered through Kovac Securities, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, found online at www.kovacsecurities.com. Advisory services are offered through Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor in Florida. Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc. is not affiliated with with Kovac Securities, Inc. or Kovac Advisors, Inc. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All investing involves risk. Investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may no longer be reflective of current opinions or positions.